how are ya? You know what I'm in the mood for today? I just woke up feeling kind of bold and I wanna answer some of your tougher questions. And it's funny because I feel like my desire to be super transparent on the internet does this. Like some days I'm like, you know what? Forget it. I'm just gonna be so candid and honest. I don't care what anybody thinks and it feels good and it feels freeing. And other days I wake up super guarded and I'm like, I don't wanna give anybody any fuel for anything. I just wanna do a haul video today and not talk about anything deep at all. And so I just threw up a, a Q and A sticker on my Instagram and y'all really came through with a lot of good ones. And I screenshotted quite a few. My goal today is just to answer as many as possible. I don't care if it's a very long video. Um, hopefully it's like a sit down and hang out with me for 30 minute <clears throat> kind of video. No political correctness, no filtering my answers, just like super honest and transparent in my home on the ground. Buckle up, I hope I don't regret this, but let's answer some of your tougher questions. Easing into it, do you plan on any more solo trips? It's funny because in my heart, I was like, I think I want to like be still for a bit after nomad life and everything. No, I can't sit still. I have a solo trip to Cape Cod happening very soon, mere days away. And I'm really looking forward to bringing y'all along on that. Okay, zero to a hundred real quick. <laughs> like I said, no particular order. This says, how did you tell your parents you were getting divorced? Was it a shock or did you drop hints? I haven't told anybody this before on the internet, but it was very much my parents that convinced me. I was home for, um, um, maybe maybe some of y'all were around back then. I basically booked a one-way ticket to Texas to figure things out because things were bad. This was after the hammer incident, so I knew that my marriage wasn't safe, but I knew nothing about the infidelity. And so I was home getting space, trying to figure things out. And my parents were the ones asking me questions. Um, and I kind of started to open up about some things that I thought were suspicious, like that uh, when I would leave town, the security cameras would turn off or that randomly his phone location would be at someone's house overnight. And then randomly his phone location just was off and that I couldn't see his location anymore and things like that. And I would tell them this kind of being like, yeah, it's a little bit weird. And they were like, Mikkel, that is not normal there is infidelity going on and I would not believe them. And so it was them that helped me kind of um, get out of that haze of lies and see a little bit more clearly. When you think of like Southern Christian parents, they, they are that. So for them to like put my safety above like the church's perspective of divorce was very healthy and important for me. Okay, back to an easy one. Would you ever wanna take more college courses? Not college courses, there's a lot of things I would like to learn. Like I would like to take um, more classes. Uh, obviously I'm in pottery classes right now, maybe some sort of business development class. Um, it's always been on my list to want to formally take ASL classes. There's like classes that I would like to take, but not. that doesn't have to be through a college. I don't have a desire to go back to college in any way. I've finished my degree, don't even use it, so. <laughs> Does it bother you that Jordy has songs about other women? No, um, that's definitely just what it's like to be dating a musician. And honestly, surprisingly, at least that are out there, there's not a lot about real women. There is a lot of fictional songs, songs about friends, songs from friends, other perspectives. And there are a couple about people he's dated in the past, but it's just part of it. I mean, there's so many videos about my past. And so it's kind of like the same thing. And it's a big perk to have a sweet boy write songs about me now. So, you know, it doesn't bother me too terribly much. Does seeing both of your best friends pregnant make you feel in any kind of way, maybe behind in life? It doesn't make me feel behind in life. In my mind, I always wanted to be an older mom. Like I didn't really want to even start thinking about kids till my 30s and I've always felt that way. My parents didn't have us until their 30s. So like that timeline hasn't changed for me. The only thing that it makes me feel is like, oh, the phase of life of like all of us just like being young and spontaneous has officially come to an end, which is totally fine. I won't be able to relate to them as much. Like all of my friends now can relate to each other about being moms and I know very little about motherhood or even kids in general. So I do worry a little bit that like, I won't be able to connect on as many points, especially now that so many of my friends have kids, but that's okay. I am fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. I have no desire to have a kid anytime soon. I'm not feeling the FOMO. I am more just hoping that I can still be a good friend 
and like figure out my role as like fun auntie Mikkel, if that makes sense. I thought this was an interesting question. Interesting, that was hard to say. What could anyone have told past Mikkel with X, it says? Anything? And it's funny because I feel like my personality, like it's hard to tell me things. Like I'm pretty set in my decisions, which isn't great, but I wish someone would have told me when I was in that unhealthy relationship, because this would have changed everything. It's a simple action, but I wish someone would have told me, wives are allowed to request to look at their husband's phones. Just do that. Like I would have got so many answers, whether it was like an insistent, like, no, you can't look at my phone, or I would have seen all that was happening. So that would have given me so much more clarity, clarity that I didn't even get till months after the divorce. You know, I wish I just got that clarity earlier. I think it would have given me the confidence to put myself first and move forward and not have, not, not gaslight myself so much. They shouldn't have anything to hide unless they're planning a surprise party for you. So I wish I knew that. I wish someone told me that. How are you preparing for your upcoming surgery? How are you feeling mentally about it all? I'm really excited. Um, in case you don't know this, I'm getting a revision surgery on my nose in the end of May. I had a staph infection that basically like ate away some of my cartilage. And so my nose is like very pointy and crooked now. I'm filming this in the morning and it always looks best in the morning. Mornings I'm like, I don't hate it. But as the day goes on, I'm like, ugh, I'm so excited for the surgery. They're basically taking cartilage from my rib and or ear and they're building back up the tip of my nose after that infection. And it's gonna be a pretty intense surgery. It's estimated to take five hours the operation itself and then like a couple weeks recovery. Physically preparing, I'm just doing all the pre-surgery protocol of like trying to decolonize myself so that I don't get another staph infection. Mentally, I have to just decide, do I want to put out fewer videos during recovery or do I want to work really hard in batch film because I hate missing uploads. I don't know if y'all have noticed that like besides after Christmas when I take actual time off, I almost never miss an upload. So I'm just trying to grapple with like, is it worth really hustling before the surgery to like batch film some things to not miss an upload or do I give myself permission to take time off and like that's the mental thing that I'm like kind of trying to figure out right now is what feels good there um, and I haven't decided yet mm -hmm. um, would you say you don't share as much Christian content because you keep it between you and God I would say that first off like it's important to me for my community to know that I am Christian like that's just a part of my identity you know what I mean I'm not gonna hide that but it's also important for me for that not to be like the core focus so that people that believe differently don't feel alienated or don't feel welcomed. I respect other people's beliefs so much and I hope they respect mine too and I hope they don't feel like I have an agenda of like pushing my beliefs on them. So I'm just really mindful about that. And I just, for the first time in my life, have been really healthy about taking a Sabbath. So I don't film on Sundays. And so you don't see like my church experience, my like the things that I took away from the message, et cetera, et cetera, because I'm not working on Sundays anymore, which I'm really proud of myself for. Does your ex still live in the house in California where you both lived? No. So I had paid six months of rent and moved out after one month. So I essentially had paid for that house for five more months while he lived there, while I paid for my own apartment in Austin, which in hindsight, a little bit bitter about. So after that, he moved. I don't know where he is. I frankly don't care, but all I care is that I'm not paying his rent anymore. Isn't that great? Did you make the first move or did Jordy? I don't know how to answer this question because technically I commented on his reel. So I saw him at a show, followed him on Instagram. He posted a reel from that show and I was like, great job basically, um, but like a little funny. And then he DM'd me and we started talking and then he said, hey, I'll be in Austin for South by Southwest. Can I take you on a date? I technically made the first like little like comment, but then he did the first like actual pursuing of like sliding into the DMs and initiating a date. Do you and Jordy share your faith? Would this have been a deal breaker uh, for you if he didn't? Um, we do share a faith and I feel like we align on a lot of things that maybe like Christians don't always align on. I think for me that faith is just an important pillar. So I would want to share like similar beliefs with my partner, nothing against, I know plenty of people that are successfully married that believe two different faiths. But for me personally, that is probably a deal breaker. But one thing that I love about Jordy's beliefs that align with my own is that we 
care a lot more about being loving and inclusive than we care about being right. And I feel like a lot of Christians care about right and wrong more than they care about being loving. And so that's something I love about him. Like he has so many friends in different communities of different like religions. He has a lot of friends and a lot of support in the LGBTQ community. And that's something that's important to me as well as a Christian is to like love extra hard on people that maybe have different lifestyles or beliefs than your own. And so that's something that I love about him and his faith. Um, that just aligns with mine. What are your plans when your lease is up? <laughs> Great question. I have no idea. My lease is going to be up literally, I think either December 1st or December 15th. So like right at the holidays. So as of now, my tentative plan is I'll probably go month to month after that. Don't even want to know what they're going to charge from month to month because this apartment is already kind of like top of what I would pay for an apartment in Austin. And so month to month is probably just gonna be stupid expensive. I think I would either re-sign a lease, go month to month and like get through the holidays and then figure it out. I told Jordy I don't wanna be long distance more than two years and that will be like getting close to the two year mark. So someone's gonna have to move eventually. <laughs> this one's interesting. What is your perspective on couples therapy? I think therapy's great in general. I'm still in therapy for myself. I've found so much healing and help from therapy. My experience in couples therapy at the end of my marriage wasn't what I had hoped for it to be. And I think because we went to a very Christian counselor, which I mean, like it was important for me to have a counselor or therapist who like got our culture. But first session, therapist says, just want you guys to know that since this is like a Christian counseling thing, always on the side of marriage. I'm never gonna say anybody should get a divorce. And so I remember there being times in the room where like someone would say something and he, the therapist would just be like, like silence for like a minute. And I could tell his wheels were going like, oh, I'm not gonna tell them they should get a divorce. Well, I don't know what I'm gonna tell them. And so like, because of that, it wasn't as honest or helpful or healthy, if that makes sense. If I was like in that situation again, or if I do couples therapy ever again in my life, I think I would leave religion out of it so that like mental health and like honesty could come first. Because if someone is like, this is unhealthy and unsafe, I would want them to tell me that, you know what I mean? Okay, I get this question a lot, so I'm just gonna like quickly answer it and address it. Are, is your best friend's husband and your ex-husband still friends? If you don't know, um, the way I met my best friend is because our boyfriends at the time were best friends and roommates. And so we became best friends. Short answer is no. After everything came out in August, it's cut ties. So and I'm thankful for that. <laughs> Can you please show more TikTok Mikel on YouTube? You're hilarious. Thank you. Um, we'll see. I don't know why I feel like safe over there. I don't know why. My goal is to introduce more of that over here. Let's just say nobody on TikTok calls me unbecoming. <laughs> I feel safer over there. But my goal is to show it more authentically. That's what this video is. This is me just, just going for it. Pedal to the metal. Do you feel like you've fully mourned your old life now? Married, California, house, etc. Um, I feel like I feel like I'm pretty much there. Healing is not linear, absolutely. I think I still have trauma in my body and I still have like unhealthy responses to situations because of that like conditioning for six years. But I don't think I am mourning anymore. I don't think that there's any missing, any longing. I actually, I know that there's not at all because the further away I am from that, the more relieved I am. I thought this one was interesting. I don't know how this is gonna be received, but I do wanna talk about it. It says, what is something that God has been teaching you recently? And I feel like I kind of had my eyes opened in an interesting way this last month in terms of like empathy towards people going through really hard and traumatic situations. I was in Nashville the day or two days after the terrible, tragic, heartbreaking school shooting that happened there. And Jordy has friends, close friends, whose kids go to that school. And so it was an interesting lesson being close to it and having conversations with people directly affected. We even went to dinner with people that were directly affected as well. And as someone that like posts online for a living, whenever a tragedy happens, there's a societal expectation to like post about it. Of course, my brain was like, okay, I need to think about like what I'm gonna post about this. But then I was having conversations with the people that were like literally directly affected. Thinking about posting something, knowing that they were gonna see my stories felt so disrespectful to them as if 
if I was trying to insert my voice onto their trauma and pain as if I could ever even begin to fathom what they're going through. God has taught me it's so much more important to love on the people in front of you in a genuine and empathetic way than to like post something for your own image to look good because that is not genuine affection even if your intentions are good that's been that's been a big lesson that i've just been kind of like marinating on for the last few weeks and like how what are other ways that i do things that i feel like are right but are actually maybe disrespectful to the people involved how do i be a more empathetic and loving person and not just do what society thinks is right or looks good on to a lighter question would you be interested in getting back into podcasting i have days where i'm like i want to podcast so freaking bad like i love just how it feels like this format of a video but podcasting feels even safer too because there's no comment section so you feel like there's like a little bit of a buffer so you can really just be so open um but then i go back and forth between like oh, I really wanna have a platform and a, and a way to just be so open and candid to maybe we should have some boundaries to where not everything is like so exposed all the time. So you feel like you have some level of privacy and I kind of like oscillate between those two thoughts. Okay, this was like one of the most common questions. So let's just answer it. Do you have a timeline in your head for when you want to be engaged? Um, I did at first, I first, when I started dating Jordy was like, I wanna date someone a year and then like, we'll talk about engagement. But a year came and went so fast that now I'm like, okay, maybe like six more months and we could talk about it. I had a lot of people be like, do you ever think you'd get married again? Honestly, I think I answered this question like right after the divorce. I was like, absolutely. Like I think marriage is a beautiful thing and I want to try to have the opportunity to do it right. I want to experience the beauty of a healthy marriage without lies and infidelity and deceit and emotional abuse. I want to know what it's like with someone who cares and loves and wants to work towards something and build something. Maybe like a year and a half of dating and then like I would be open to it. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Are you still active in your religious community in Austin? So this is another thing that because I stopped filming a lot of Sundays. People just don't see as much. I've actually found a new church. Um, I went to a church called Red Rocks for like a year here in Austin. Great church. Honestly, their worship is incredible, but I just felt like the culture was, it was hard for me to get plugged into because it's like, a, I don't want to say this, it sounds mean, but it is just kind of like a fratty culture. So like all of the community events were very like sports oriented or like kind of like a little more like rowdy. And that's just not me. Um, so I ended up go, I found a church that a lot of my friends from LA that have moved here now go to. I like it. It's um, a very diverse church, which I like, um, and it's small. And so, you know, I think it's, I think it's great for now. Um, it's not like my dream. I don't feel like super passionate and plugged in, but if I'm being honest, I love I love Jordy's church in California. And when I'm there, I volunteer. <laughs> and it's like very in alignment with like the phase of life I'm in and like their community things are all very creative based. Like they have like literally candle making classes and like pottery and like things like that. So I just feel like it's easier to make friends because the, the events that they're hosting are like things that align with my personality. I don't know. So who knows, maybe that will be my church one day. If you had to move out of Texas tomorrow, where would you move? Probably a coast, east coast, west coast. I feel like I would thrive living in Maine, but only during the summer. I don't think I could do winters there. Um, I do like Oceanside where Jordy is. Um, California taxes are hard to swallow. Quality of life is more important than taxes. So I don't know, I don't know. Thoughts on boundaries with friends of the opposite sex when you're in a relationship. I mean, I think do what's right for you um, and do what's right for your partner. Me personally, I just get uncomfortable hanging out one-on-one -on -one with any straight guy when I'm in a relationship. So I won't hang out with straight guys one-on-one. -on -one. I have plenty of straight guy friends that like I totally find to hang out with in a group setting. I just don't want there to be any like mixed messages. I don't want them to misinterpret anything. So that's just me and what I'm comfortable with and it works for me, but I think that that probably depends person to person. Would you consider doing a favorites video every few months to go over your favorite items? I actually love these videos and I've done them quite a few times, but I feel like they always flop. Like I feel like they don't get a lot of views, so I don't know if y'all like them or not, but I think they're fun to make. So let me know, should I do another one? If you were to get married again, would you have another big wedding? I don't think I would have a big wedding. Honestly, you know what I would want. 
I would want my invite list to be so small, like literally maybe like 30, 40 people, close, close, close friends. And I would want whoever I was marrying, especially if it was their first wedding, to be able to invite all of their people. And I would want to do like a much more like budget friendly wedding. <laughs> like I, I would not spend $3,000 on a dress, absolutely not. I would not have like a big wedding venue. I'd probably get married in like a church. You know, like I would just, I would cut back and I would save the money for a honeymoon, for sure. Do you ever worry that YouTube won't be around in 10 years? <laughs> Career backup? Oh, all the time. I will be shocked if YouTube is around in five years. I hope it is because I love this as a job. Um, there's a lot of things that interest me that I think I could maybe eventually pivot to. I've always thought home staging sounds like such a fun job. I would love to work at Whole Foods Corporate, I think. Um, use my nutrition degree a little. I think I love being self-employed, so I think I would probably end up in another self-employed job somehow. I can't believe out of all of the really hard questions, this is the one that I'm most nervous to answer. But I got this question several times. Several people asked, are you a Swifty? Are you a Taylor Swift fan? I wanna say, I think she's a brilliant businesswoman. I am so enthralled with the way she's maintained relevance for decades at this point and how she has so many generations just like willing to drop anything to support her. That is such an art. And also, I don't know, she, she just knows relevance so well and is able to like shift and adapt easily and that is such an art. So I never had anything like against Taylor Swift. I think her music's great. I was never like a big fan. She's become a little bit of a trigger for me because at the end of my marriage, Taylor Swift was one of the reasons that I kind of started to suspect my ex was cheating on me. The couple of girls I was suspicious of, their biggest personality like identities where they were big Dodgers fans, big Taylor Swift fans. And I was never really that super into Taylor Swift, so I never talked about Taylor Swift with my ex or anything like that. And I started to notice on his podcast that he was making Taylor Swift references. And literally that was my first tell of, I think he's been talking to the, the girls I was really suspicious of. So because of that, I do have a little bit of an issue. Like that's a personal thing that I need to get over, but I can't classify myself as a Swifty because like I have a mental tie to trauma. <laughs> We're gonna end with one difficult one, kind of deep one. I thought this was interesting because this was from a pastor. He said, as a pastor, I'd love to hear about the complexities of engaging and re-engaging with church after divorce and abuse. I will say there's not a lot of resources for women in the church who are divorced, at least in my experience, which is interesting because half of all relationships end in divorce and a lot of people in the United States would consider themselves Christian. I feel like it's almost a taboo subject that people are like, tell me about your story, but like don't really wanna ask like nitty gritty deep questions. I just had one experience within my church in LA at the beginning that was very hurtful and put like a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth, but I don't hold it against anybody. This is the thing is I feel like there's a lot of church hurt and I don't want to perpetuate church hurt because there are people that are running churches and people are so imperfect. So of course there's going to be bad experiences, but I'll just share my tougher experience that I did have to like kind of mentally work through in order to continue having a good relationship with the church. When I was still living in California and like things were going downhill, I had conversations with the woman who um, was very influential in the beginning of my marriage, essentially was premarital counselor. And so of course, once the marriage started getting hard, wanted to talk to someone about it that would get it and had these conversations with her and I very much trust her and her perspective and her word. But I mentioned that my parents were having doubts about the health of my marriage. And so they were asking me questions being like, hey, I don't know if this seems healthy, etc." Her response to me was essentially, marriage comes first, you made a commitment, and if your parents are putting doubts in your head, the healthy thing to do is cut your parents out of your life and tell them, you are not allowed to speak to me about my marriage ever again. And that was hard for me because I know my parents have my best interests in mind and wanted to just protect me. And so being told by a leader that I respected in the church that the healthy solution was to cut the people who have my best interests in mind out of my life was really hard for me to like grapple with. Yeah, but otherwise honestly haven't had an awful experience 
<laughs> that was the only one that was like a little bit hard for me to, to get through. Yeah. Sorry, heavy last one to end on. Like I said, really challenged myself to screenshot some of the hardest questions. Why was the Swifty one the hardest of them all? <laughs> Nobody come for me, please. I didn't, ch I didn't choose for that to be the first tell of infidelity, okay? I did not choose for that. Thank you for all of the encouragement that I've gotten recently of just like, hey, this is the community you built. Show up authentically. The people that don't like it will leave. I think I needed to hear that and I'm excited to show a little bit more of like honest and silly and sassy and goofy Mikkel over here because I really feel those parts of me reawakening and thriving in my offline life. And so I'm excited to reintroduce that a little bit to my online life as well. I love you. I hope you have the best rest of your day and I will see you in a video very soon. So let's take all night, all night, all night.